Welcome back, everybody. How you doing? I missed you. I really did. I hope you missed me. Um, what's it like to be you in there? You're a computer. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I've been drinking. Uh, so cheers. Uh, my buddy Marty, uh, the Marty Worm, he said he was drinking in his last video for his birthday and for me to have a beer with him. And some dear friends came by this weekend and they left me with some Hammer Heart beer. So this is what I'm having. This is Vindhurst von Vindhurst something? Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but the beer is uh, made after a dear friend of Austin Lunds who is in Waldgeflüster, the German band. So cheers to that. I got two CDs in today. They're awesome. This is Golgotha. Now I'm wondering if I already did this in another video. Hell, I'm gonna talk about it twice or once. I don't know. But this is To Starve the Cross from Golgotha. This might be my album of the year. Uh, I'm friends with this guy and I've known him for like 15 years. Actually, this is a whole band, but the main songwriter, one of my dear friends, and I'm so fucking proud to see what he's pulling off. Um, this is progressive, unique, imaginative, just mind boggling, strange death metal. There's nothing like this. It's so unique and interesting. Uh, it bears listening to over and over and over and over and over again. It never gets old. The lyrics are incredible. Uh, I just cannot recommend this enough. Golgotha to Starve the Cross. Maybe album of the year unless something else comes along. I'm still waiting to hear that new Bellinos album. Um, another thing I got in today was uh, Limbonic Arts, 95, 96. This is two rehearsals that were put out again on CD by Kirk Productions back in 2012, I want to say. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this band, but I always thought what they did was kind of interesting, and they kind of do it well. I just don't listen to them very often, but these rehearsals are really, really cool got a total necro sound and by the way we're listening to it right now so uh, keep your ears peeled for this um, I've kind of had this on my radar for a couple of years and wanted to pick it up I finally found it for a decent price using the metal detector to find a uh, place in the state selling it for pretty cheap so today we're just gonna get back to the usual going through my CDs uh, I think we left off like at the gates or something last time I've got a couple more at the gates, so we're getting to the bottom of the A's. Anyway, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, this is Aurora Borealis. Praise the archaic lights and brace. Uh, this is a United States death metal band with kind of some black metal leanings a little bit, led by Ron Vento. Uh, this is a really killer band. There's, there's a lot of different drummers throughout the uh, discography and I'm not gonna name them all but like Derek Roddy is in some of them Tony Loreno I want to say is on one of them um, I think he also worked with that kid who did uh, the first I hate eternal record I can't think of his name now killer drummer though um, but yeah this is just some awesome straight-up death metal um, I can't really remember which one of these I wound up liking the most it's hard to keep them apart because of, look at how similar they look. Um, let's see, yeah, this is the one. This drummer is the one I can't remember his name. Um, I saw him play on a Vital Remains tour probably 12 years ago or so, and he fucking blew my mind. Amazing drummer, whoever this is. <laughs> We're having fun here. So, yeah, Aurora Boy Alice, this stuff is really good. Um, I think they have another full length. Um that I don't have that came out before these three. But uh, this is Praise the Archaic Lights Embrace. Uh, this is Time Unveiled. And this is Northern Lights. And Ron Vento, who writes all the songs in this band, also plays in a band called Imperial Crystalline Entombment, which is fucking incredible. Also, that's like, it's like the same thing, only pure straight up black metal, like, icy cold Marduk kind of stuff killer stuff I really want to get their full length um, so yeah check out Aurora Borealis or ICE Imperial Crystalline Entombment is the acronym for that 
So anyway, we're gonna go backwards through the next band, one of my all-time favorite bands, Aura Fucking Noir. Uh, this is the Increased Damnation uh, live. Is this live? No, this is the re-release of Dreams Like Deserts, uh, which is stupid that I have it because I have Dreams Like Deserts. This is uh, an original on Hot Records. So this is a reissue on Hammerheart. It is... I can't remember if it's, there's live stuff on here. Yeah, unreleased live and studio stuff. Um, and... I don't know, there's 15 tracks on here. Gotta have it. Or and Or is an essential fucking band. Uh, yeah, I love these guys to death. And, I don't know, I never really cared for the artwork on this, but whatever. I'll buy anything Or and Or puts out, except for the last three albums. I've just been lazy. Too lazy to get them. Um, this is, yeah, like I said, Dreams Like Deserts. This is the first EP they ever put out on Hot Records, which was a label run by Chagrat from Demi Borger. Uh... I think Fenris sings on one of these songs. Fenris from the Almighty Dark Throne. Uh, but yeah, th they didn't really uh, capture their sound with this EP. They were kind of getting there. Their demos are really interesting, by the way. Uh, they sound a lot like Vedboy and Zen. If you're curious, uh, I'd love to track down their demos. But uh, this is one of the first metal records I ever bought uh, back in 97, I want to say when I was pretty much just expecting everything to be straight up black metal. Uh, and this kind of threw me for a loop. It was thrash. It's black thrash. Um, and so like, this was kind of an entry point with thrash for me as kind of a late comer in the late 90s. So it's kind of weird. This is one of my favorite thrash albums. I know it's kind of like black and thrash and I totally know, you know, all the, the creators, destructions, the Sodoms, um, Tankard, all that stuff. They're some of my favorite thrash bands, but really, like when I feel like listening to thrash, this is the record that I want to pick up. I know that's kind of weird, but I just love this album to death. The drumming on here is incredible by Carl Michael, one of my all-time favorite drummers and guitar players and singers and lyricists. Uh, I'm an absolute Carl Michael Eyed fan. Who's also in Cadaver, Cadaver Inc. Uh, but yeah, this is a classic, essential fucking album gotta have it this is the malicious records version uh not much to look at just a lot of black shit <clears throat> as as most of my fucking cds are ah delicious beer i look like i'm a walking advertisement for hammerheart which i guess i am yeah uh this is just a live bootleg of Noir live on elm street this is them playing i think uh in oslo where they're from uh, and the sound on this is actually pretty shitty if I remember correctly uh, but like I said I'll pretty much pick up anything or and or except for the last few records um, so this is the follow up to the last one Black Thrash Attack I didn't even say what it was so this is their second full length Deep Tracks of Hell and it shows them uh, kind of more exploring the black metal side of things a little less thrashy. It's a really interesting record. I think it's really unique. Um, and it, it's actually kind of unique in their discography too. It shows where they they started to progress into something a little more weird. I feel like I should turn the volume down a little bit. So sorry if that was a little too loud. Um, it shows where they kind of went from straight up like beer slewing thrash to a more progressive style, which which got really interesting after that. Oh, let's see. Before I... Yeah, okay. So that does it for Aura Noir. I'd like to get some of their other stuff. I just never really got around to it. It's all good. Killer band. Um, next, I don't know how... Some of these got out of order, but... The Red in the Sky is ours. Another one of my favorites. I already covered a different version of this in another video. So there's not much to talk about, but... This is Old At The Gates at their best. One of my favorite records. Alf Svensson plays guitar on this. I'll spend some fucking rules. Uh, this is Terminal Spirit Disease. This is the album where Alf left and the guys kind of tried, started to explore uh, a, kind of a different sound. And this is actually an EP of one, two, three, four, five, six new songs and three old live tracks. The live tracks are killer. The newer stuff um, is debatable, but 
it was formula, formative for me in getting into metal because these two albums were really big when I was first getting into metal. And so, Slaughter of the Soul, I love it to death. I understand why people would hate it. There's a lot of hardcore type of influence in it, kind of like Slayer, and it spawned a genre of bands that are fucking awful and make me want to puke. But I can't, can't ever deny, I'm lying if I say that this album isn't a fucking masterpiece. I love it. I don't listen to that all that often because I kind of burned out on it when I was um, a lot younger. But I still, I swear, it's a fucking masterpiece. Um, I wish they would have just broke up and stayed broke up after that album because the last one was a pile of shit. Uh, but this is also pretty good uh, precursor to Slaughter of the Soul. Next, we've got an Australian band called Astrial. This band is really interesting. They're super talented and nobody fucking knows about them apparently. Uh, this is Renaissance Misanthropy. And I just picked up this earlier this year. This is Anatomy of the Infinite. Um, I would say this one is a little bit better, but I've had this one for years. If you remember a band from Indiana called Fog, that these guys remind me heavily of Fog, which is an awesome band. Kind of more like... Uh, Emperor kind of stuff, uh, super symphonic, tons of keyboards and layers and uh, harmonies and stuff. It's just not quite as like memorable or catchy as Emperor stuff is. But uh, yeah, this is a great band. Astriel, this is a it's a pretty cool booklet. I like these slick digipacks uh, that that actually fit into my CD shelves. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't really say that these sound like a lot of other Australian bands, so sometimes it's kind of a surprise when I remember that they're from Australia. Um, I would say they sound a little bit more, maybe like a German black metal band, or Hungarian or Polish or something like that, but they're a super talented band and they don't get enough credit. Uh, this is kind of a, like a grind band, I guess you'd say, uh, Asuk's Mystery Index. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, they took the grind style and really worked around with it some more. Um, this isn't like straightforward grind. It's not like Napalm Death. Um, it's maybe a little more, I don't know, emotional or passionate or something than just straight up like vulgar, pissed off grindcore. Um, this is an intense, intense record. Uh, pretty essential for anyone in the grindcore. Most people in the grind consider this one of the uh, hallmarks. And this is just a sound pollution version. I don't think there's anything fancy about this. Pretty easy to pick up. So this is a weird band called Ass Jack. And I just talked about them. And I remember the name of the drummer who was in Aurora Borealis. His name is Tim Young. And he plays in this band. And he rules. Um, this is Hank Williams III playing, I don't know, like thrashy punk metal. Punky thrash metal. It's fucking, the drumming on it is just amazing. Um, just like straight up chunky riffs. It's super fun to listen to. Um, it's obvious they didn't really spend a whole lot of time writing the songs. They're just kind of stupid fun songs. Just sloppy, chunky death metal kind of stuff. Um, they're, they did a lot of other stuff that I didn't really care for. Um, but I, did even, I even saw them live with a different drummer and it didn't really do anything for me. But this stuff, this stuff is super, super fun. Uh, I haven't listened to this in a while, but this is Ass Jack's self-titled, I guess. Uh, Gravel Pit is a killer song. Cutthroat is a killer song. Uh, Cocaine the White Devil, Tennessee Driver, Wasting Away. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's almost like Melvin or Butthole Surfer's riffs with just amazing, speedy fucking drumming. It's kind of cool. Ah, cheers. Uh, another band, Asphyx. Killer death metal band. This record is their best, I'd say. Lobotic art is so weird. This is The Rack. Killer album. I've also got a uh, self title. I think that's the Century Media version, yeah. I've got. Wait a minute. This is Crush the Cenotaph. 
this is self-titled. Uh, I can't really remember what these are like because I always listen to the rack. Every time I want to listen to a fix, it's the rack. Um, I should probably figure out which one of these is worth a shit. Anyways, um, but a fix can't go wrong. Except for their newer stuff, I've heard is kind of eh. I hate I hate it when bands get reunited and put out mediocre shit and act like they're the best just because they're old and they've been around forever. Anyways, this band is called Asuka, just like Burzum's first record. And this is a compilation of two demos, Satan Legio and Goat Fuck. <laughs> I don't remember what this is like, but I remember liking it quite a bit, and the artwork on it is really weird and eerie. Look at these, like, rats sliced in half or something. I don't know, but they are a Russian band, and this was sent to us, Ron, uh, Lord Sardonyx and I. This is a Propaganda Records. This was sent to us from uh, the guy from Lucifugium. So, that's a quick run-through of a pile of CDs. That's all I got for you tonight. Cheers. Cheers.